How to repressurize a Worcester Bosch boiler. Hello, I'm Rhys Powell, Qualified Gas Safe Engineer and Director of Operations for Warmzilla. I wanted today's video to be about repressurizing a boiler, specifically Worcester Bosch boilers. As one of the leading boiler brands in the UK, I thought it was important to inform you how to repressurize a Worcester Bosch boiler. If you've recently discovered that your Worcester Bosch boiler is acting strangely and displaying one of the following error codes. A. 1. Indicating there is low to no water in the system. 1017W. Notifying you your water pressure is too low. Or 2971B which is the warning for your system's pressure being too low, then it is time to repressurize your Worcester Bosch boiler. Many homeowners would consider repressurizing a boiler as a task left to a professional or a gas-safe registered engineer. However, boilers have been designed so most individuals can do it themselves. We understand how stressful it can be when your boiler isn't working as it should. That's why our expert team at Warmzilla is here to help. With our quick and reliable boiler repair service, we'll have your boiler back to its best in no time. Don't wait for things to get worse. Click the link below to book your repair today and let us take care of it before it becomes a bigger problem. And if you're finding this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. Do all boilers need to be repressurized? It may surprise you, but many modern boilers do need to be repressurized once or twice a year. This is because boilers circulate hot water through their system daily and some water is bound to escape. Before we learn how to repressurize a Worcester Bosch boiler, let's review why your boiler may lose pressure, be prone to needing more water top-ups, or if it is showing signs, it needs a professional. Why do boilers lose pressure? Any boiler may lose pressure for various reasons. Most of these reasons are related to changes in weather or wear and tear of the overall heating system. Luckily, when your Worcester Bosch boiler displays one of its error codes, the unit will turn itself off to prevent damage. If you are seeing these error codes more frequently, for example, four times a year, here are some common causes for a boiler to lose its pressure. Step one, there's a leak in the system. Your boiler's system must maintain an optimal pressure level to work efficiently. Even a tiny leak in your heating system's pipes, radiators and boiler can cause the pressure to drop. Finding any leak can be difficult as they're not always visible. Leaks can be located along a hidden pipeline in a wall or under the flooring. A sign that your system has a leak is if you must regularly top up your boiler's pressure. Step 2. A faulty pressure relief valve. A pressure relief valve is a crucial safety component in any boiler system. Its primary function is to release pressure if there is too much of it. The valve is designed to open automatically when pressure reaches a critical level. However, if faulty or malfunctioning, it may release pressure inconsistently, making it the source of the system's leak. In the worst case scenario, although very unlikely, the valve could fail to release built up pressure, posing a significant risk. Step three, an issue with the expansion vessel. The expansion vessel in your boiler is a vital component that absorbs the extra water pressure created when your central heating heats up. The expansion vessel has a flexible diaphragm and an air cushion, which work together to ensure that your boiler's heating system maintains a constant pressure, preventing sudden spikes. A sudden change in pressure can cause damage to your boiler's heating system. If your expansion vessel malfunctions, is damaged or loses its air charge, it can't balance the pressure causing the boiler system's pressure to drop. Please contact a gas-safe registered engineer if you need to repair a boiler's expansion vessel. Step 4. Cold weather. When temperatures drop below freezing for an extended period, your boiler's external condensate pipes can freeze. If you have a Worcester Bosch boiler, you may see an error code either EA227, EA229 or D5, which will let you know that your condensate pipe has frozen. When these error codes appear, the boiler may shut down or release built-up pressure, with the latter action gradually lowering the system's pressure. Step 5. Bleeding radiators. 
Bleeding radiators is a simple task that anyone can do. The main reason is to release trapped air from the heating system. However, when performing this task, you should be careful not to release too much water. If you allow too much water to escape, and it will drop the system's pressure. Thankfully, you can quickly fix this issue yourself by repressurizing the system. But what is the best pressure level is for your Worcester Bosch boiler? Best pressure level for a Worcester Bosch boiler? All boilers need to maintain a stable pressure level to operate efficiently. The best pressure level for most boilers in the UK is between 1 and 1.5 bars. But this being said, always refer to your boiler's manual if your manufacturer's recommendation is higher or lower. With Worcester Bosch boilers, they release to the public a system filling guide and have said their boilers work best between 1 to 1.5 bars. Also, in their guide, Worcester Bosch explains in detail how to read their pressure gauge, which is located on the front of the boiler. I'll summarise their guide for you. Your boiler will work efficiently if the needle is in the green zone. If it is in the red zone, your boiler will most likely shut down. The Worcester Bosch guide also states that it is advised that should the system need refilling on a very regular basis, a plumber should be called to check for leaks in pipes, or more likely, radiator valves. But if you're sure your boiler just needs to be repressurized, here's our step-by-step -step process. Step-by-step -step to repressurizing your Worcester Bosch boiler. Now that you're ready to repressurize your Worcester Bosch boiler, you will want to follow our step-by-step -step closely. Step 1. Turn off the power. You can turn off your boiler by the closely located fuse spur or, for everyone else, a big switch. If you can't find this switch, boilers can also be wired into a standard home socket. But when in doubt that you haven't switched off your boiler, turn off all the power in your home from the switchboard. When you're confident the power is off, locate your system's filling loop system. Step 2. Identify and find the filling loop system. A filling loop system is used to top up the water levels in your boiler's heating system or to connect your boiler to your home's cold water mains. Usually, the filling loop system is located underneath the boiler. There are two types of filling loop systems, external and internal. While some differences exist in how these systems work, they generally follow the same principles. External filling loop. As the name indicates, these filling loops are located outside your boiler. Usually, the external filling loop is a metal braided hose that connects your main cold water supply to your central heating system. The external filling loop features two valves. One controls the water flow from the mains, while the other ensures no backflow from the heating system into the mains. A flathead screwdriver may be required to open and close these valves. Once you've repressurized your boiler, you will remove the external filling loop. Make sure to remove the filling loop. Leaving an external filling loop attached will increase the chances of contaminating your heating system and lead to sludge buildup, which will require calling in a professional. Internal filling loop. An internal filling loop is integrated into your boiler, which is common in modern boilers. You will either need a key to unlock it, or your internal filling loop will have a lever tap that doesn't require additional tools. Internal filling loops are more convenient and can be permanently installed, meaning there is no need to detach and store them away. Sometimes, the installer will store away a linkage part of your internal filling loop near the boiler. This linkage is called a rigid filling link. Usually, these links are bent copper pipes with two brass wing nuts and washers. Before attaching it, ensure the water mains and central heating boiler taps are securely off. If it is not marked on the system, generally, you want the lever to be positioned in a direction that crosses the pipe. When attaching the rigid filling link, remove the system's blanking caps, which help keep the thread intact and prevent debris from gathering in the outlet. Position the washer and slowly tighten the wing nuts into place. Please be aware, do not force the wing nut to take. Doing so will damage the thread and cause the rigid filling link to leak. Now that your filling loop is in place, it's time for the next step. Step 3 opening the valves. As we mentioned, both filling loop systems have two valves to ensure that the water from the mains flows in one direction. Open the first valve, allowing cold water from the mains to fill the loop. When ready, gently open the second valve to the boiler's heating system. Don't open the valve all the way, 
as this will fill up the system too quickly, overpressurizing your boiler. Allow the water to flow into the system slowly. At the same time, you must monitor the boiler's pressure gauge. You should see the needle start to rise. Wait for the needle to move to the green area on the gauge and close off the second when you're happy with the pressure level. Step four, closing the valves. As mentioned, when the correct pressure is achieved, you will close off the valve to the boiler's heating system. The next valve to close is the water mains valve. Make sure that the valves are correctly closed. If they aren't, you will notice the pressure in your system continues to rise. For those who have repressurized their Worcester Bosch boiler with an external filling loop, you will need to remove it. When removing the external filling loop, have a towel or bowl to catch the water in the pipe. Step five, turn it back on. If everything has gone smoothly, it is time to turn the Worcester Bosch boiler back on. After turning the boiler on, monitor the pressure level to ensure it stays within the acceptable range. You will need to take another step for those who have accidentally added too much water. Step six, draining excess water. To lower the pressure in your boiler system, you will need to locate your radiator's key or a flathead screwdriver. This will be familiar to those who have bled their radiators before. However, you ideally will have an additional person to monitor the boiler's pressure gauge to tell you it is at the desired level. But for those who haven't done so before, here is a quick guide on how to bleed your radiator. Find the bleed valve. Most bleed valves are located at the top of the radiator, but they can be on either side of the radiator, left or right. Usually, a bleed valve will look like a small metal square, or depending on the manufacturer and your opinion, it could look like a screw located with a hexagon nut surrounding it. If you are in doubt, most radiator companies publish an online manual for their product for you to double check. Bleed the radiator, insert your radiator key, or use your flathead screwdriver, and turn it in an anti-clockwise direction. Righty tighty, lefty loosey is a very good phrase to remember this. Please make sure to loosen the valve slowly as a quarter rotation can often be enough to release the water in the radiator. Make sure to have a container to catch the water. Close the bleed valve when the pressure reaches the correct level. Hopefully, that extra person monitoring the pressure gauge informs you quickly. If you accidentally drain too much water again, you can repeat the filling process or call a professional for help. If your boiler is still within warranty, then now is the time to call the manufacturer and get an appointment for them to come and take a look. If your boiler is out of warranty, you need to weigh up whether it's worth spending a few hundred pounds getting the heat exchanger replaced. At Warmzilla, we're here to keep your boiler running smoothly with our expert repair services. Ensuring no matter the issue, we can get your boiler back up and running again. Click the link below to book your boiler repair. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more tips and advice from Warmzilla.